Running Airflow using Sequential Executor with Docker. In this video we're gonna learn how to use Docker and Docker Compose in order to start the web server and the scheduler of Airflow. Since we're gonna use the Sequential Executor, we will see how two containers can share the same SQLite database. Let's go to the terminal. Thanks to the previous lesson, you should now be familiar with the Docker file we use and you should already have the Docker image Airflow image built as shown by the Docker image ls command. Before moving forward, let me show you what we have in the entry point script which is executed each time a docker container of our airflow image is launched. First, multiple global variables corresponding to the credentials of the metadatabase we could connect with are set. Then we have this list of environment variables related to airflow exported into the docker container. You may be wondering why those variables are actually exported. Well, you have to know that it's possible to set any configuration value for airflow from environment variables which are used over values from the airflow.cfg configuration file. For example, if I want to modify the DAX folder, I could set an environment variable named airflow two underscores core as it is a section of the configuration key two underscores DAX folder and the new path I want. You can also define connections via environment variables by prefixing them with airflow underscore cone underscore. For example, airflow underscore cone underscore postgres underscore master sets the value of the connection called postgres underscore master. Having said that, the script doesn't load the DAG examples if the variable load underscore x equals to n, it waits for the ports used into the docker container to be available, sets the metadatabase and the queue if needed to use according to the executor, sequential, local or salary, and finally, the script executes the appropriate commands to run Airflow. Now it's time to see how can we run the web server and the scheduler of Airflow with sequential executor using docker compose. If you list the files into the docker Airflow folder, you can notice that there is three docker compose files. Let's focus on the one with sequential executor. This script describes the two services or docker images I want to run which are the scheduler and the web server. Both services use the same image airflow image we built earlier. Then we specify that the containers must always restart in case of a failure. We set the required environment variables to override the configuration file of airflow. Basically, we are saying that we don't want to load the DAG examples, we use the sequential executor and we indicate the path where the SQL database should be into the container. Next, we have the volumes. Those volumes allow to mount a auth path, a path from DVM, to a container path. In our case, we define that all the DAGs contained into the DAGs folder from our VM will also exist into the folder user local airflow DAGs from the Docker container. The interesting part here is actually the second volume which will be used to share the metadatabase file of SQLite between the scheduler container and the web server container. If we didn't do this, we should have started both the web server and the scheduler into the same Docker container. Finally, each service runs its own command according to which component of Airflow we want to kick off. Notice that the scheduler will always run after the web server is running since the scheduler depends on the web server. And a healthy check is also done to verify that the docker container of the web server is running, otherwise a health status event is generated which can be useful to monitor. Now you know what the docker compose file does, it's time to execute it. Before moving forward, we just need to create the folder db which gonna contain our metadatabase. Now, by running the command docker compose f docker compose sequential executor.yaml up d, the web server and the scheduler are gonna start from their respective docker container. If we list the docker containers, we can see that the scheduler and the web server are running. Notice the healthy message in the status of the web server due to the healthy check done from the docker compose file. If we take a look at what we have in the db folder, we obtain the airflow.db metadatabase as expected. Let's add the hello world DAG from the folder airflow underscore files into the DAX folder of our containers and go to the airflow user interface. You may end up with this kind of loadings. Don't worry, it's absolutely normal. It takes some time for airflow to detect your DAG by the web server. Once the web server is aware of the existence of your DAG, the scheduler needs to detect it in turn. This process takes 5 minutes by default and you can actually change this value from the configuration file of Airflow by modifying the parameter DAG underscore dir underscore list underscore interval. Now let's run our DAG and refresh the page to see if everything works as expected. Perfect, our DAG is actually running by using two Docker containers. One last thing from the terminal, if you want to stop your Docker containers with Docker Compose, type docker-compose-f docker-compose-sequential-executor.yaml, done. As you can observe, all the containers have been stopped and removed. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. I hope you have learned a lot of new exciting things and see you in the next video.